Deidre, welcome to the Trash or Cash podcast. The show where the host will present a new idea and debate whether it's trash or cash. But the final decision is solely up to you, the audience. Deidre, welcome to the Trash or Cash podcast where we get together and talk a little trash and a little cash. But what does that mean? So right now, the, the show, I know this is the first exposure, but... um. It's about entrepreneurs. It's, it's for entrepreneurs, by entrepreneurs. You're an entrepreneur in the real estate space and some other things. Yes. Multiple streams of income. We all got to have them. And um, it's for entrepreneurs, by entrepreneurs. And I'm an entrepreneur too. Again, multiple streams. That's what we're here to do. We're about to talk about ideas and so maybe some of those multiple streams, get to know each other a little bit. Okay. And then kind of Shark Tank style, we're going to pitch each other an idea and see if it like it could be a good idea that like would make money either in our business or maybe it's something you heard just to see if it was like worthwhile or not. And, it, and if it is or it isn't, if it's trash or if it's cash, why? Okay. Because why? Because people are going to learn from it. Maybe they had the same idea. Maybe the idea already exists. And, and the point is to get something out of your head that's been spinning around there a while and like bothering you. And you just want to know is you is or is you ain't my baby. Like that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you're trying to find out. So Ideas obviously are one thing, but reality is another. So we don't know if it's trash or cash until we get it out into the world. And that's what this is about, getting it out into the world, seeing if it's going to live or die on its own. And who knows, we might create the next unicorn sitting here talking to each other. Somebody might see this and be like, wow, I'm going to do that. And one of the things, to be honest, is a lot of people that I talk to say, well, I don't want to share that because that's mine. Well, guess what? If you're not going to do nothing with it, what's the point? Do you want to see something in the world? If you want to see it in the world, maybe you don't got the time or the, the resources. So maybe you don't have the time, resources, connections, whatever, but you still want to see it in the world. You'd use it. If you, you as a customer would use it, that's valid. Yes. There's probably, if you would use it, maybe there's a million more people, two million, a billion, who knows? So nothing is wrong. It's just ideas. And uh, hopefully from this podcast and all the episodes, we spark a couple of goodies because- I mean, that's the fun part of all this is like creating things on the spot. So with that, I'm going to let you have the floor. So you are Deidre Smith. Yes, sir. I'm not a sir. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. So we got to talk okay. trash. You can call me a nickname. Make, okay. Make me up a nickname right now. Um, I'm going to call you D. You can call me J. J. Okay. J Money. J Money. J Money. I, I, J Money. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had that before. So J Money it is. And how about, okay. I don't want to say D Money. What? <laughs> Let me see. What can we go with <laughs> D bags? No. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just keep it D. Okay. <laughs> D, keep it 100 D. All okay. right. D. So um, what should we know? Right? Anybody out there just listening in, maybe they've been to one of these, well, they've heard one of these episodes before, but about you, what do you want people to know about you? Quick, you know, two, three minute kind of summary of who is D? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me here. Um. No, thank you. <laughs> I Guys, you might not know this, but D is like a, um, what would you call that? A, a, um, a last minute replacement. She showed up. She showed up at the right day. We had, yeah. a, we had someone call out and, um, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a, a blessing yeah. <laughs> that she showed up. So she showed up at the right time in the right place. And, and that means something. So divine providence. <laughs> well, first and foremost, I am a realtor out here in Tampa, Florida, and I'm excited to say I just finished for my interior decorator. So, you know, need any decorating, I definitely can assist you with. And um, I think for the most part, me as a realtor, what sets me apart is my eye. Like I have an eye for anything on the property because I also do other work as well. Um, that D Details, I guess you're saying? You have an uh, eye for details. details specific, yes. And those are good or bad details, yeah? I think it's good. I know some agents, you know, I'm all about making money, but okay. I don't want to make fun. Like, I don't want to make money off the back of, um, how can I say it? 
You don't want to be just transactional? Is that what you're looking for? No, I just don't want to sell someone a property and I see, like, you know, damages to, and they don't notice it because they just see the aesthetics of a home. Oh, this is beautiful. They don't see that water leak that I see coming from the ceiling that could potentially be problematic later on because I see that all the time. So I want to be more of an agent that not only that they can come to and rely on for purchasing property, buildings, whatever the case may be. However, I want to be that agent that they can trust when they're buying a property. They're buying the property as what is, you know, disclosed to them, um, that there's no issues. So Yeah, there's what's legal, like, (laughs) to talk about in the disclosure. And then there's things that's like, you don't have to disclose there's a dead body here, but wait, D, pick, D picked up a blood stain. <laughs> like, you, yes. where did you get the the eye from? The experience of knowing what to look for was there some other um, training, special training you had or experience? Yes, I've been a claim adjuster for properties for quite some time now, um, and that's all I do. So I go through. I used to be a field inspector, and now I am a desk adjuster. I do currently do that. Um, so. We have to review photos, videos very detailedly and um, pick and choose, you know, what is valid to be covered and what is. So that's why um, it's good to have a lot of different experiences because these kind of um, intertwine and make you better at something. And and that's case in point, like, you know, we all want to have multiple streams of income as investors. You know, I think. I forget where, but like seven's the golden number if you can get it. That is. And that can become from different ways. But the more of them that kind of relate to each other, that don't, let's say, um, violate a certain rule. Like, I mean, you know, in real estate, there's always some stinking rule. Well, you know, you can't be the lender and the agent and double dip and the, like all these things because there's like a conflict of interest. But if you find something congruent and use that to add value you're going to get a, a, a more faithful, a more loyal customer. Definitely. And at the end of the day, that's really important these days, that loyalty. Um, and Because first of all, you don't even see it anymore. When it comes to agents, it's like, I mean, I've seen people <laughs> not even hire their own mothers or, or cousins because they just don't think that that person's going to look out for their interests. Yeah. And they're wrong. But the point is, if you know somebody is like, uh, has this skill set, uh, oh, listen, why would we hire somebody else when we know this person could get us the house, get us a discount, identify problems, and decorate that joint afterwards because yes. they got the ideas? Yet yeah, we're like getting three for the price of one. So why am I going to go to one for the price of one when I could get three for the price of one? So it's really a value add to the customer, and you're doing them a good service, and you're not just being wishy washly or hustler esque. You're actually doing them a, a better service by having more knowledge that. Because we already know most people don't trust real estate agents because they think they're like just trying to just trying to sell them something or sell them on something. So yeah, that's you know that is pretty sweet. So I like to ask like three questions of everybody that comes here. Okay. So I can get to know them better because we kind of just met. You know, I met the dog. I met you. You, you know, your your buddy over there. <laughs> yes. And but we still don't really know each other. But more for me and for the people who might be listening and watching this. And your future fans, yeah. I want to ask three questions of you so we can kind of know, you know, where your head is at, what you're about, and where you're going in life so that if we are going that way too, we're going to lock arms. Definitely. And get to know each other, right? So that's that's what this part is about. So okay. th- first question, what are you most proud of? What am I most proud of? Personally or just in life in general? Like <laughs> Pick. Pick what you want. Get whatever you want to share. I mean, I am most proud of um, my children, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm proud on how they turned out. <laughs> Because I didn't know if I was doing a great job. <laughs> I know that's a little bit I'm, off subject, but I'm going to ask you something. Mm-hmm. Right? How many? Three. Okay. So those are okay odds. I got six. <laughs> oh so the odds are one of them, maybe two, <laughs> if two might not be so great. So the less you have, the better your odds are, I like to say. But anyway, that's just some random thought that popped in my head. Yes. You continue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm proud because I do have, um, she's about to be 21 in a few weeks. She is in the Navy and she is killing the game. She just hit two years and she is E5 already. Um, she's going to college for cybersecurity. And I have a 19 year old that lives in Tallahassee and he's going to school. Professor, I don't know, 
if that's going to change, you know, because at first it was a surgeon. So but I'm proud. He's living on his own. They both have their own places, work, and doing great. And then I have a 13-year-old at home. 13 year old at home. So so you said 20, 22, 21. 21. And what was the other one? 19. You heard that? 19. About to be a surgeon or a doctor or something. <laughs> I'm doing that for my son in the other room. Yes. <laughs> he's on the a, right path. Yeah, he's a he's great kid. He's a great kid. kid. Everybody that comes to me here thinks he's a great kid. But if I... If I if I didn't give him the 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 ri- give him the ribs a little bit, you know, he he probably get too comfortable and try to not excel. So I gotta. Yeah. You know. Oh no, I did that with mine. <laughs> Nature thought I was the worst. That's why I was like, oh lord, how is my kids? Gonna, how are they going to turn out? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they turned out pretty well. I'm exactly. Proud. Like don't don't ever hold that back. Just give it to them, and they, they you make them stronger. Definitely, they don't understand that yeah. when they're younger, high school days. They do. Oh. You would have thought I was the worst person in the that, world. That's why a lot of these kids today are so butthurt about every single thing that happens to them because they just never got drilled or hit with the chancla or just oh, anything to. <laughs> La Correa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're Latina? I didn't even know. Oh, <laughs> shit, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Um, more, more, uh, more synergy here. Um, so at what age did you know, like, being an entrepreneur that was in you. Like, oh you're not made for a job. You're not trying to be corporate. Like, what age were you just, like, you out there? I want to be honest with you. I knew it around 12 years old. What were you doing? What, what was the, what was the um, thing? I used to, my mom, I love her. She worked, like, three jobs. And when I tell you, I'm not trying to be rude. I don't like authority figures over me. I don't like someone telling me if I can take off, if I can't take off. And that's, I, that's I just being that. Latina. <laughs> But I realized that so early on and I'm like, you know what? I used to help her do like housekeeping and um, I did that. But then, you know, I started, you know, like my kids do the same thing. I started going around the neighborhood like, hey, you need you need your dog's walks. You know, I had my own schedule and like, listen, I can walk your dog at this time to this time. So dog or, walking was your first? No, oh. cleaning was. I, I was helping, you know, housekeeping with my mom. We used to work in. Um, Cape May County area, like Cape May area, with like cleaning the mansions, which it was so much fun doing that because you you look at that and you're like, you know what, I want this. I want someone coming to my mansion cleaning. Now my the mansion. real estate makes sense. Mm-hmm. She got that she got that um, seed in her mind. She's like, yes. oh, this right here. Yes. If I can't have it, if I can't pay for it now, I know how to get access to it. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. And also with real estate, my parents own properties from South Jersey to North Jersey to Philly. Mm. So um, when I seen that, I was like, man. And once I got old enough, I started seeing how like tenants did my parents. And Mm. I'm like, no, we need to write up a contract. And this is early on. I'm like, we got to do a contract. My mom was like, well, if you know how to write up something that's, you know, feasible, write up a contract. I did that and they got nothing but better tenants. I'm like, you need to start doing credit checks and everything else. And this is around 17. Yeah, um, I want to say that similarly, my parents had real estate and they didn't really know what to do with it because that wasn't their their vein, but they had the building. So they would always try to do these deals with these tenants where like, I ain't got a lot of money, but I'll pay to fix it up. Yes. Never worked. They always made it work. If there's a wall to fix, what do they do? They put on one piece of sheetrock with, with, they'll drill it. They won't spackle it. They won't paint it, nothing. They'll just be dry. And that's their, their, that's their contribution. And I actually had to take buildings off their hands simply because the things were falling apart and these other people were like trying to act like they were adding real value and they yes. were not because oh I'm doing it de la corazón we're doing a favor and my parents didn't want to you know they weren't about that business they wanted to do the right thing and they were trying to help people out but yes. they were just making it worse for everybody and, wow. and, and what do you call it enabling the bad yes. behavior right so you forget that that if you if you can whip your kid and teach them the right way I'm not saying you could whip other people, or, yeah. but you can guide them to be more responsible in a loving way. Yes. And it doesn't have to just be transactional, like give me my money every time of the month. No, you want a good, affordable, clean housing. You need to do this part to get that result. And some people just don't get that because they're mm-hmm. entitled today. But, not, you know, that, that's, that's the struggle. <laughs> It's different. It's definitely different nowadays, especially if you look back at how you were raised and how you grew up. And like, these kids are not the same. I call them like little, um, I guess, tablet babies because they keep some sort of electronic device in front of their face. Like, get outside, please. (laughs) To that end, are you the type of person knowing that 
that um, revolts against that and gets mad? Or do you try to, because this whole thing is about turning something that's not great into something great, right? Like that's the theme that, I, you know, if it hasn't developed fully yet, it's kind of where I'm going is. So I, I'll give you some context. Like, you know, who Gary V is Gary Vaynerchuk. No. Okay. So long story short, very social media guy, marketing guy created this empire um, from a, a, his YouTube channel, Wine Library TV. And now he's like one of the most respected marketers in the world. Very, pretty wise. You know, like yeah. I said, you good guy to learn from, but taking something that is the trend or the way the world is going and rather than revolting against it, because you now back in the days, it's like, oh, the television is going to rot your mind. And maybe, maybe after that, it was like, oh, comic books are going to rot your mind. And then now it's the tablets are going to write your mind. First of all, just bitching about it without no, like, just because you're old. Yes. <laughs> because cause it's not the way you grew up. First of all, getting rid of that because you're not going to stop it. But embracing it and taking it and getting in front of it. Yes. And if their face is in the phone, then you need to be in their phone so that you're back in their face. You kind of witnessed a little bit of that just being here today because I was showing you these kind of little cool things. And it's like, hey, if you're going to be here. So why I asked that is, is if if you think about it, like, Kids today are way more technologically savvy. They're going to fly. Like my six-year-old daughter's out here doing Minecraft stuff and, and making things. Yeah. I'm all the daughters coding, my other son. They're doing things that I I wish I could do yeah. and at a young age. So there's a benefit to all these things. But yes, attention and all these other things. So there's there's this, there's, there's this um, double-edged sword with it. But if you just learn to lean into it and be like, okay, that's the way it's going to be. Then I'm going to get in front of it. And these are the ways I'm going to get in front of it. You can benefit from that instead of always be fighting it or, I agree. you know, and your kids are going to appreciate that more because they're like, you're trying to understand and not just be like finger wagging at them, you know? See, what I did with my children, um, I can only speak for what I have done. They stayed with a iPad in their face. So I made it fun for them. I let them choose educational apps. I don't care if I paid for it or not. But I made they wanted to play games, so I made it so That's exactly what I mean. Learn off of this game yeah. and you can you can play it, but you give them a time frame, either an hour, two hours, okay. Yeah. And then you can play whatever you want and show me the scores. You gotta get good scores off of it. So that's how I kind of um negotiated with them. Well <laughs> my, compromise, I should say. No, well my version of that was like how do you learn how to read, right? Like, what if you don't like how to like reading? Well, fortunately I did, but I learned off of Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. I, true story. I went to first grade back in the day. I was four years old in first grade. I graduated at 16. I just stayed ahead. Yes. Sesame Street was how I learned how to read and write before I went wow. to school. So they were like, why put this kid in kindergarten? He already knows everything. They, that was now, you know, developmentally, they don't do that anymore. Yes. But the point is I did that. Comic books. They'll rot your mind. My creativity comes from reading comic books because I didn't mean, I didn't really like to just read, read just words. I like to see pictures. Yeah. So I think in pictures that got me the love of reading. And I got, you know, I got hit by a car when I was seven years old and, and I was in the hospital, nothing to do, but watch stupid TV and everybody's arguing over TV. And my one, my, my mom's cousin bought me a stack of comic books. And when he did that, I had this whole world. I'm stuck in a, a body cast for weeks I got comic books now. So it made me want to learn how to draw, be creative, storytelling. So I say that is because th if, if you're the type of person that without the, the um, what do they call that? There's, there's different mindsets. There's a closed mindset. And then there's a, the, um, the, not the open mindset. There's a different word, but mindset. The mindset is how am I going to learn from this? Right. Yes. Not how am I going to fight against this thing? That's going to overwhelm me and just make me miserable all day because I can't stop it. It's too big. Take that and turn it into like you did. You okay? You want to play games? Hey, educational app. That's the only thing I'm buying for you. If it ain't gonna teach you nothing, I'm not buying it. You have to figure it out on your own. And of course, they're gonna take the freebie, right? So like you, you, you flipped it. So definitely, bravo. What's your vision for the future? My vision for the future is um, I don't mind doing what I do now because I definitely keep my nine to five um, while I, you know, work. Your nine to five is is agent because that's pretty flexible. No, I am. I am still flexible as an agent. As you can see, I'm here today mm -hmm. and I'm still doing the work that I do as my nine to five. But my nine to five is a uh, claim adjuster. OK, cool. Yes, Got it. And that's fine because the top the the thing that people do need to learn is this. 
without some kind of financial base. I don't care what kind of entrepreneur you think you're going to be. If you don't have some stability and breathing room, you will not, you probably will not get there. Now it's crazy that there's people out there that never had a job starting these tech companies with these big ideas. There are a few of them that are equipped to do so, but the people that are not equipped to actually take instructions will never be good leaders. And the reason why is if you don't know how to take instruction and follow through, how are you ever going to teach anybody to take your instruction and follow through? So you got to have both. You have to have a little bit of both. Same thing in real estate. Like people are like, I want to go invest in real estate. Well, I don't want to be get my hands dirty. I just want passive income. You, you want passive income? Cool. You're going to be making almost no money because you don't understand what it takes to do anything or what it costs. So if your first two properties, let's say, you didn't go and you didn't paint and know what paint costs or you didn't do a roof and know what a roof costs, they're going to be killing you with these prices because you're just not going to know who, because you never paid for it yourself, right? So if you don't pay these dues, for want of a better word, you're never going to get fully uh, rounded out, fully um you know, all the information you need to make the intelligent investment decisions. You're just going to throw money at a problem and you're going to wonder why. Well, damn, it's not really any money in real estate. That, the reason why is because you just don't know enough. Yes. You, you never did enough, so you don't know enough. You haven't really solved any problems. You just try to be lazy and leverage everybody else because that's the world we live in. It's all click a couple buttons and then be done. Sure, my app is a trash app. It costs $9 per bag to pick up. That's a lot of money. You know what? We know it's a lot of money. You having to go clean up a mess from a party, drive all the way to the dump, maybe wait in a line, waste six, seven hours of your life. So what's an hour of your, what is four hours of your life worth? Three hours, two hours. What's the gas money worth? What's the toll worth? Yes. What's the drag on your life worth? Or you could pay this, press a button and it could be done. That's a little bit too expensive. Okay. Well, again, we all got to pick what we're going to pay. You want to pay for your with your life and your time and your and your. And so it's the mindset, yes. I think, because you know if you're extremely busy, time is money. You uh-huh. can be busy doing something else, like scheduling something else. If you have something like uh, event uh, property that you can be busy working on something else while I'm sorry, uh-huh. while um, someone else is picking up the trash. Because what is worth, let's say, five bags, fifty dollars. What is fifty dollars worth? You know, in time and aggravation. Yes. Right. I know. I don't. If want you're to do a cleaner, that. and you're like, I make my money cleaning the house, not taking the trash to the dump. Yes. And you got to put a bunch of trash in your car because you can't put it out by the curb because they're gonna get a um a fine, and then that's seventy five dollars on the owner. You can't go. You don't want to drive back there the next day, and and come get it from the yard or whatever. The things they want you to do for them for free. Or don't do that. Stay yeah. in your lane because if that's money you could be making actually cleaning another house instead of running around for other people doing what they don't pay you for. Yes. So I think about those things because it's like, yeah, you can do everything, but should you do everything? What is your highest and best use? If you don't start thinking like that, you're going to be forever hustling. You can work as hard as you want, but you're not going to get a result you want because you did not learn how to invest your time and energy properly. I agree. You just try to, you know, you just try to do it all yourself. And there's this balancing act and that's the game. I agree. That's the game. That's why when I was doing real estate, I had a license for a minute. I used to tell people, look, I'm not trying to do none of this paperwork. I would get it sold. You handle the paperwork. You can have half of my commission. I just don't want to deal with none of the paperwork because I don't want to deal with it. And it was worth it for me. Yes. Well, you giving up half your commission. I'm giving up a hundred. I'm, I'm giving up no freedom. I mean, I'm. she's, I want my freedom. Yes. I don't give a shit about that half of commission, right? So that's, people don't understand it. It was like, what, you know you, what, how do you want to enjoy your life? So a little bit of a side note, but to that end, yeah. What is your time worth is the biggest thing. I agree. So this next part is really simple. We're going to talk these ideas and I know you had one. Yes. So I'm going to let you go first. I don't even know what I'm going to share right now. I, I have a cheat sheet here, so I'll probably go into something, but... But having said that, let's hear what your what this idea is of yours is. Okay, um, I think it'll be a great idea as an agent um, to have an app where even if you have open houses <coughs> and you're showing property, yeah, you can go on Showtime if it's on the MLS, but if it's not, just for the protection of people, because I know I've run into, a, I don't mean to be rude, but a lot of weirdos out here, they would show you proof of funds, you know, um, 
their approval, pre-approval letters. And it's just like they want other things out of it. And sometimes you feel unsafe. You know, I even went and got my concealed weapon license and I do carry for when I go to like showings or open houses. I, I really think it's not stressed enough in the real estate world, but an app where they have to upload all their information where you know who they are and it like identifies who they are. And rather it's a background check. I haven't like thought of like all the kinks yet, but I think it would be very important to have an app where people upload their information and it's still protected, but you know who they are. And if anything was to happen, like you see on the news all the time, agents either being killed or it's just a strange things that occur when it comes to it. So Real estate, everybody sees the pretty side of real estate, but there is also an ugly side to it. So I really think an app for showings is very important. It identifies the people and the times that you're going to be there. So there is no incidents that could occur where an agent could be taken advantage of or harmed. Okay, questions. Who pays for it? Who pays for the app? Yeah. Like in other words, so usually apps um, or services are free and then either the agent pays something or the person who gets, um, who's getting this background check pays something to get the showing. And that's tricky because, um, you know, with the rules around um, fair housing and things like that, they can always be like, well, you don't like me because I'm black or whatever. And it's just like, I get it. But I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to play the devil's advocate for the regulate, the overbearing regulations that are out there because you're dealing with it real and feelings because you're there. And these people are sitting there making rules about stuff that they don't, they don't got the full picture. They just, they just trying to check some marks. Yeah. Do we violate this or that? So it has to be like a really kind of rapid background check. And the cheapest thing that wouldn't cost would be like, like a, like a social, it's almost like a social media sweep. So like for, like, for example, I know Airbnb, there were some services for short-term rentals where they would do this almost as, it's not a deep background check, but it's like a socials, right? Yes. And what it does is it just kind of goes through the last, you know, everything they can find real quick and throws you a report for like a quick, I don't know, it was like 15 bucks or 20 bucks or something a month. Right. But what was cool about that one is if you, for, you're going to rent your Airbnb, your short-term rental. The person that's trying to rent it, it might go back through their whole Instagram and be like, this person throws parties. They like advertising on Instagram because we used to do that in our group. We were like identify each other, but it was hard work. It was just like, it was like a, a round robin. We looked out for each other. There was no central app and there were services. So I'm just trying to figure out like a real estate agents get already get, you know, they only get a piece of a piece of a piece, right? Yes. So how would you sell this? Who would you sell this to and how would you sell this? Because there's two ways you can go about it. But I do know this. You're going to get pushback if it's coming from the actual buyer, you know, themselves. Yeah. Potential buyer themselves. No, I agree to that. It doesn't necessarily have to be. I just want the identity to be disclosed. You know who you're showing, like who you're meeting up with <clears throat> and who they are. And they have the proper credentials to show the property. I just feel like it's important uh, for you don't know who you're showing the property to and they match with who they say they are. How big of a market? Like, okay. So do you see any other use cases for something like this? Call it, um, velvet rope. Let's call this app velvet rope. It's okay. almost like you got to get into a club. You got to pass through some visual certification to be able to access Let's just say not just real estate, because if you just say that, then, you know, you're under the real estate laws where you could use it for other things so that you could bundle it together and people could use it for real estate, but it's not specifically for real estate. Okay. And they can't say, well, if it's real estate related, we got to go under all these regulations because the more regulations, the harder cost prohibitive it becomes. So could you see this velvet rope idea? I'm just calling it that to give it an idea, a word could be used for any other use cases because that might be where something like this could work better than just real estate, which is super regulated. Um, I understand real estate is regulated. That I think it would be beneficial. You pay a membership for the MLS. You know what I mean? Like for the Tampa uh, Realtors, mm -hmm. you pay that membership annually. 
I honestly think it should be bundled up in that and that that is provided to you. You know who can pay for this? Um, it's part of your membership. I think that would be just like they have Savvy. Savvy, the Savvy app. It has your it has your agent number on there. It has now everything. I'm, think, I'm thinking banks and lenders might could to do this. Hear me out. Because if there's going to be a transaction that's going to require a mortgage, you're going to need a lot of that crap anyway. Yes. And it's almost like you, you require before anything a... This is, I always thought that this is how, this is the world we live in. You should, let me, let me pull it back. What I did. Yes. I was never going to show a house if I didn't have to. I was going to send you a video. I was going to tell you to drive the neighborhood. And if you liked the video and you drove the neighborhood and you liked it, then I'm going to let you in. Why? Because you know how many times people would drive a neighborhood and be like, I don't like this. I don't like that. Whatever. So go, you go do that first. So they actually had to do a couple of things before I would actually go and show up for anything. Okay. You seen the videos, so you already know what it looks like. You already drove the neighborhood, so you know, already know what that's like. So there was this kind of pre-qualification process. So something like that, where they have to follow a certain amount of steps before they can show up in the house. And maybe pre-qualification will be the, the third one because it requires a certain amount of yes. um, identity identification. That... People are going to not like it, but, but if it's forced, if enough people get on board with it and maybe, you know, maybe it takes the big guys to do it first, the big houses, and then kind of trickles down. Yes. It should work. You're going to get some pushback. You're going to get this, this um, inequality and, and equity. And what about, um, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it. it's trash for now, but because there's a lot of hurdles what has what will make it cash is steering around the regulations. In other words, Trojan horse. Get it in there where real estates can use it, but it's not really a real estate app. If you push it as a real estate app, you're going to deal with all the laws, regulations, and the bullshit that comes politically. But you mean for to housing. tell me you have yet, as an agent, you didn't waste your time with someone that wasn't really trying. Like no, no, no. I'm there's not a lot saying, of time wasted. <laughs> so I, okay, I'm going to give you an example. Eliminate. I'm going to give eliminate you an example. All the wasting the time. I'm going to give you an example of a use for something that nobody thought about. Okay. Okay. Uber's not a real estate app. Okay. Agreed. I agree. I used to pay people in an Uber to go see if my contractors were working on a house. I'm not your customer. I want you to go to this address, get eyes, look around, see if you see people working and let me know because I don't okay. have a camera. Was it a real estate app? No. Did I use it for real estate? Definitely. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got to sneak it in. Okay. You got to find some other ways to make it useful to other people outside of real estate. And then the real estate people on the sneak tip, the agents, the underground will use it that way. Because if you go head on, with the real estate part, yes, that's where the money is, but that's where the most resistance is going to be because people are going to start saying unfair housing and I'm, I'm, I don't have, you know, all the damn stupid things that they come up with today to rail against something. But if you figure out a creative rate and you can maybe, maybe even use it that way, a creative way to use something that already exists or a different way to package it yes. where it's broader, mm -hmm. but you can still use it that way. I think then it could win because it has a broader use space, but it's used for that on the sneak tip. I don't think it will be considered unfair housing. It's just identifying yourself through an app. It's just putting something in that you are who you say you are. I mean, I guess if, in you, order can, to, if you can convince people to pay for it themselves, like, oh, like, like almost like a rental application, right? Okay. I don't think that will work out. I know. I, what, I don't think that that, That's out. what I'm saying. They have to volunteer it because if they didn't volunteer it somehow... Then they're going to say, well, you use my information against me for whatever reason, because people don't want to accept the fact that they don't make enough money. They think it's, oh, you didn't like me. No, no. It's just identity app. Uh, as far as, okay, if they, you know how everyone has to get pre-approved. I know I, if you don't show me a pre-approved letter or cash. I, know, I, you, I, I get it. The identity piece is the problem because uh, Airbnb, back to Airbnb. Yes. Airbnb stopped letting people see the host. Yes. They stopped taking IDs, period. Oh, wow. For a while. Now, I think they went back to it because people were just like, what the hell? I have no control over my property. You're letting anybody in here. They're scamming. They're yes. just starting an account. They don't even have a real name. Yes. Because they wanted to appeal to other people that said the same excuse. Um, 
uh, we feel like we're being discriminated against because I have a black name, I have a Spanish name, whatever. I feel like like they're discriminating, and they they would take that literally like, oh, they would, oh, that you must be right because they want to err on the in the side of their customer, not the not the the person. But there's two sides to that customer story, yes. right? You're a customer too. You're the agent. You're part of that ecosystem. So they were trying too hard to appeal to one person because of trying to be politically correct and all this other stuff. But they were putting other people in danger, hosts, you know, scammers were getting in, robbing whole houses, all this, because they were just making up fake accounts. And it was real easy because they weren't taking ID. Yes. So you have to like, that's what goes back to this. If you take a full ID, they might say, well, I'm, they, they see a picture of you. They might, if you reject it, let's say they get rejected for any reason. It's because I'm, you know, it's because I'm this, you know, my situation or what I'm a, a um, B, B, what is it? BPOC, whatever. I'm a person of color. Yeah. They don't like me. That's why. And then they start, and then, you know, lawyers, frivolous lawsuits. Yes. This is the dumb crap that everybody from Airbnb hosts to HOAs to real estate brokers, we all got to wait through because people just don't like hearing the word no. And they're going to use any excuse and they're going to say ID because it's like, well, my personal information, I have, it's a lot. And, it, and, and I'm just saying to you, when if this and for something like this to work you got to come in the side door yeah somehow and it and going right into real estate is too ripe for uh what's the word i'm looking for um not misuse but for exploitation and it goes on both sides they're exploiting my information they're looking at my picture they, it's they, not um it's not about that i think um you're misunderstanding where i'm saying it's just you know how you know you want to purchase a home right yeah, you, okay. go through, you usually go through a process of... You, you meet an agent. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, I'm interested at viewing this home. Okay, no problem. Do you have a pre-approval letter already? So I can know what your price range is to view the home. Or, you know, you're going to have proof of funds. Okay, no problem. They have that already. They're already looking. So they have to submit that to you anyway. I always ask for that. And they email me over their information. So that right there alone. Oh, uh, okay. So basically taking what is already asked for and putting it in a central place that does just a little extra work. Yeah. It's not, you could send like, send the app to their phone and they could just upload it right then and there. And you have uh, it right there, but you know, that's the identity of the person. Toro. Toro is a perfect example. Okay. It's based, thank you. Because I, I was just going to clarify, all the way. yes, because I was like, I don't know if you're... <laughs> Toro for real estate. Basically, Toro will make you, I, you have to identify the person showing up. They got to show you the same license yes. or they cannot access the car. Yeah. And because real estate is worth more than a car, you can literally do Toro for real estate the same way. And it's the whole Toro process, take a couple pictures, give me these documents. Yes. And then when you show up, I need to see that ID. Because if that ID doesn't match what's on this app, you ain't coming in here and this is over. It's just for the protection of no, agents. No, that's, that's the way. It. You, you, okay, back to, this is cash. If you, if you replicate Toro, the process that Toro uses to yeah. identify, to keep people from, you know, safe, literally you could just clone Toro almost and make the same process and it will probably satisfy that same requirement yeah. with a couple extra documents. And that would just be like the pre-qualification. It. Yes. It's cash. I just want to you know. You changed my mind. Yes, because I'm like, That's where never is he happened going before. with this? <laughs> I was like, where is he going with this? I'm like, hold on, hold on. I think it's a misunderstanding. No, no, no. Thank you. No, but that's that's like that's my only like. So when worry <laughs> when you pitch this, yes. you're gonna okay. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna go get free Canva, get a presentation deck. Okay. Go find whatever deck Toro used, copy it, make it for real estate. Clone, like and use that and pitch that and I guarantee you you probably would get picked up if you use that Toro um, process of, of identification yes. and just turn it into this real estate thing you probably could get that made for nothing and make something out of that and you that could be your thing yes do it go find a Toro deck you probably find it Google it find out what they use to pitch Toro okay use Toro just see what it's like you know that the, the, the parts they tell you to take pictures take the ID and their rules Take all that together, put it in a pitch deck. It's Toro for real estate. What do you mean? Instead of a car, it's a house. Yes. You, the same process. And how much is how, how much does Toro make? Billions. Okay, cool. I'm in. Yes. <laughs> Dude. That's all. Give me I a want. cut. Give me a cut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all. Instead of everyone don't always check their emails and everyone say, Oh, we didn't receive it. Spam, spam. Some people don't receive it. And just to 
Cut to the chase, everyone uses their phones. I don't care. I know elderly people that know how to work a phone better than me. So it's just like, boom, you have that on there. You're looking for a home. You already know that's what you want. Why not just have that on there, even if it's temporary, but it's just for protection for both. Yeah. And you just get cut. You just actually just get a cut of the... The, it could fund itself basically if it was used during a transaction and that person goes through the process there, it's either monetized by it's free to the person because they, they put it on there. Now they have a file and then it, yes. they could just keep using that file. It's like already in there. Yeah. And then, f- you know, if a lender is part of that transaction and they're part of the network, okay, lender, give me a little cut. Um, some of it comes out of, like it could be partitioned out to sustain itself from the MLS yeah. fees and the lender or whatever other, there's, there's probably some verticals in there that you could use. So the design services put the trash, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> give you some free trash pickup because you're, you're a customer. I don't know, but there's, there's a lot. Of, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Sometimes I'm stupid. No, I <laughs> think you just took it the wrong way. <laughs> I did. I did. And, and to be honest with you, that's the lesson we both learned is yes. for your ideas to ever be, um, you have to get them out first and you got to hear from people. You got to yes. argue a little bit yes. and then somebody's got to click in there. But here's the thing. We live in a world where people are just trying to make you hurry up. You got five minutes. If you can't pitch me in five minutes, the cool thing about this right now is now you're going to be able to get it down to five minutes. Cause I just told you to clone this and call it that. And Pretty you much. should be good to go. Yes. I want to see this thing when, <laughs> okay. in fact, in fact, for real, for real, for real, for real, when you do it, show it to me. Okay. Cause I'll be like, okay, this, this, and this, and use this and let's go pitch this. Let me see who will buy this thing. And maybe, we, maybe that's the thing we do. Cause okay. I, cause I can see that now. Yes. Mm, interesting. I think it's very beneficial. Beneficial? No, I don't care about beneficial. I'm gonna make some money. <laughs> uh, no. I'm with you on that. I definitely want to make some money too. <laughs> no, I care. But about, I also want to help. I care about us. safety. No, yes. no, safety because, is very important. Because for real, for real, that's a very real problem, and we we know security is. I mean, your man's in security, right? Security is a big thing these days because people can lie and do all kinds of things. So the more ways we can kind of mitigate that risk, especially for women out in the field. The more, you know, because that could be my mom one day, my daughter, yes. my, my my wife, right? Like, can save their life. Yes, I agree. So, yeah. Cool. Um, I don't even know what I want to pitch because now that that came out, um, let me see. I know we're running short on time. All right. I'm going to give you an idea because I used to be a firefighter. Okay. I think it's pretty good. Um, it's small, but it could be big enough to probably be like a you know, eight figure a year kind of deal. Okay. So because you're in real estate or in commercial, you know, like it just needs to be a certain amount of fire protection in a building, right? What do they tell you when you have a kitchen, you gotta have a little fire extinguisher. Um, most of the time when um, apartment buildings, firefighters do VBIs or, or they, they, they go through a building and they check to make sure all this. One of the things they check is to make sure that the, the fire extinguishers are still like, um, Active. they're not expired. Active. Yeah. 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 Cause of chemicals. Right. So if there was an app for fire extinguisher companies to either the, the communicates with the fire department where they find one expired mm. or even people in the property management could just do, and they could just simply tell you when it's expired, your tags expire. You just filled out as you go through the building, you mark that they, and it just tells you when they expire. So you replace them out. And it, and, and I, it would, the, the main person who would make an app like this that makes the most sense is people who sell fire extinguishers, right? Yes. That alone helps the people because it keeps safety, helps the firefighters, and also is a really big business for like the fire extinguisher companies because they know when things are supposed to expire. So they can just literally like, hey, you got three coming, to, you got three expiring, so they're just going to be sent to you. We're going to come through, whatever. Point is, it's like an app that just tracks the fire safety fire extinguishers of all fire extinguishers that are sold in a building to keep fire safety. That makes sense. You scan them once you deliver them and then you get a notification Yeah, a week or two before it expires. It's I really it's a, a tracking app just to keep people safe. But I feel like it should be the main thing is to get the fire departments on board and yes. make sure like, cause you know, you're going to miss one. So when they know like they got to go do an inspection for a, an apartment building or whatever, they can just be like, all right, so most of them are still in compliance. Go check a couple randoms and then just let's make sure these three are done. And, or this building's got three coming up. We're not going to go and just do a random. We're going to go when that thing's expired and go check if they were, if they changed them out or not. And it's that simple. So you don't have to wait. It, it's efficient for the firefighters. So they don't really have to just go out random and feel like they're wasting their time. 
It's like, well, they got a few expiring. Go do it. Could it be manipulated? Maybe. I don't know. But like, I feel like for safety, for public safety, for something that could be, you know, that tech can actually help make everybody's lives better, easier, things getting done faster, more efficiently, that would be a good app. I think so as well. People don't know how important it is for fire extinguishers until you actually need it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Or how to use them. Half the time people are like, hi. Hey. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> so so that maybe that's part of the app. It's like, hey, you got this app. Um, here's your fire safety code. Um, yeah. And by the way, here's how you use it. It's like a little video. I mean, yes. it, could be, it could be that too. Well, if they have the app, they can have, <clears throat> I guess, due to the model, because I know there's different types of um, fire extinguishers Yeah, and whatever model you scan, there's, it's a video. Yeah. There's about there are four or three. There's like, you know, an electrical one, a, like like different things burning. It's A, B, C, A, B, and C. Yes. There's there a D, I guess you could call the powder the D, but there's different type of powders. Um the point is, it's just like for the, the consumer, they don't have to know too much. They just got to know like, this is the right ones in the right place. Yes. And to expand it as a product line, you could just take that and make other things that have to be regularly inspected. Could be as simple as smoke alarm battery needs to be changed. It could be anything fire and safety related. Yes. That just makes it easy for the property owner, manager or owner to just be like, okay, um, you know, let me go send my guy. He doesn't have to go all over the world. You got just these three build these two buildings today to handle three buildings today instead of just randomly just walking and doing circles. You know what I mean? Like yes. just jumping, running all over the places. Like I already know my I already know my route, making it easily trackable for them. And then if anything ever happens, you get a bad fire of you get a bad fire extinguisher because you know shit happens. You already know who to track it to. Yes. It's like oh well, who do we sue? Okay, they said they inspected it. They did. Da, da, da. Okay, so manufacturer default or. You, nobody's pointing fingers anymore. They're like, oh, the property manager should have changed it. No, you, we're on compliance. You're the one that's not in compliance. So the, the accountability part is already handled hands off. That's, that's it. Just, that's a good idea. All right. I don't know if I, I, it's one of those I don't know yet, probably for the right person, but like it's something I thought of. I think it is a great idea. And I do think it'd be feasible, especially with um, apartment buildings, because they're supposed to keep them in yeah. there anyway. It's a whole building. I mean, it could, it could, it could extend to That's the, protecting their investment. the age of their hoses that are like locked up because they dry rot over time. Um, it could be a lot of things. So just a, basically a fire safety app that tracks all the necessary equipment to help the firefighters make sure that when they're going in that like nothing's going to fail on them because yeah. that's how shit happens. It's like, I agree. oh, we, we, we didn't do an inspection here. We skipped two years. People, people kept, no, you got to like. It's your time. It's yes. it's there. It's going to remind you. It's going to keep bugging you till you do it. Let me get I it. think Let me that get will it. be yeah. for the cash. right operator. That's a cash yes. idea. Yes, for the I right. I honestly think it would be for apartment buildings, yeah. condos, any commercial property, any commercial property. Yeah. I I do think that would be beneficial. Cool. Well, that's it. How'd you like it? I love it. You glad you stayed? <laughs> I am. I didn't waste your time? No, you did not. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good to be back in front of a mic. <laughs> oh, wait, you have experience huh? behind it? Wait, 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 you had a radio show? Tell me something. I had a, a podcast. What? <laughs> yes. We waited all this time and you didn't even, oh, was it, what happened to it? Well, it was just differences between other cast members and I, so we just kind of let it go. Cast members? Well, other, leaving something out. other people that was involved with it. <laughs> we oh, had our other, differences. Other hosts. Yes, hosts. I there thought you were talking about cast members. No, like, no, you using no. a TV no, show? No, no, TV is like show. One of those uh, <laughs> behind the scenes reality TV shows where they come Host. and they start podcasting. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we had our differences on topics and everything else. I love to try to keep things business oriented. I am not one. I would discuss personal, um, but I, for the most part, Let's keep with business. Let's grow our business. Let's expand. Hmm. So that was... They weren't on board with that? Or are they just never. thinking about other things? Other things yeah, yeah, yeah. that I'm not willing to, like, you know, discuss. <laughs> Spill. No. Talk trash. We got to hear. Oh, no. no trash we talk, talk oh. trash, but it was just <laughs> not what... <laughs> it was differences. That's it. All right, D. Thank it was you. nice meeting Thank you. Thank you. It was nice meeting you, too. It was, uh, uh, like I said, divine providence today. Yeah. Um, how about this? Uh, like... How would you, okay, how did you, when you did your podcast, how did y'all sign off? How did you say goodbye to people? Um, oh, if you don't want to know. No, um, we just had like our little slogans. Uh, thank Let me you hear it. Let me no, hear it. No, I don't right, know. Well, I need, I, I'm still working on ours. I haven't <laughs> really? found the one oh, I love yet. you have yet. to have something that's like. Well, give me one. Love. Let me see. Maybe you come up with a better one. I know uh, what I, I say, but I want to hear, I'm always listening to what other people got because I haven't found that perfect signing off kind of like 
thing yet. Not the one I that mean, I love yet. I haven't found one I love. Your your podcast is Trash or Cash. Thank you for joining Trash and Cash Podcast. Hopefully you tune in next time. Something that's like you love and you're adding, you're putting Do it again, head. but don't say anything else because you're going to do it. Ready? Cue that back. Okay. <laughs> say, say the ending because we're going to stop with that. Thank you for joining Trash and Cash Podcast. Join next time. Hopefully we see you next time. Join next time. I don't know how you want it. Uh, okay, no, that's good. But thank you. No, but it was. Do it was, again. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, this is all just just coming off the top of the head. Nah, yes. I, I, what I, I'll tell you what I was saying. I was saying, all right. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the trash, trash or pack, trash or cash podcast. D, your socials. If people want to get in, that's what I forgot. Oh, if people yes. want to get in touch with you about real estate in Sarasota, Tampa, yes. wherever you at, how do they get a hold of you? Well, I'm on Instagram, Deidre the Realtor. D I E D R A D I E D R A the not the with you know D A it's spelled properly T H E Realtor R E A L T O R Deidre the Realtor and Instagram right that's Instagram and um, on Facebook you can find me my name Deidre Smith D I E D R A Smith S M I T H uh, yeah, I heard it here. And even though she disrespected the DA, like Roscoe the mouth, <laughs> that's okay. Cause she's speaking proper English and we're talking, we were talking slang with Roscoe. Um, for me, it's, uh, Jason, a Jason Centeno, AKA the dad next door on IG, FB, all these other places. LinkedIn is Jason Centeno and trash meter. If you want to see what the trash biz is all, up, all about here, Roscoe the mouth, his adventures, see him dancing and DJing which is re brand new, but we're making it happen. And um, this place right here, the, this is the collab. I'm glad you got to see it. If you guys want to tap in or be around more entrepreneurs and get into conversations deep like this and do some trash or cash talk, love to have you come swing by 4007 Talifiero Avenue, North Talifiero Avenue in Tampa, uh, right off of the, two, the 275 exit 46B, MOK. Okay. And yeah, if you're trying to find us, if you want to stalk us, if you want to be a fan, if you want to throw me some money, if you want me to pick up some trash, you could just use the app. But if you want to bring me some cash, that's the address. And that's it. I'm out. <laughs> well, that concludes this episode of Trash or Cash. Make sure you follow on all socials at Trash Mitter. That's T-R-A-S-H-M-I-T-T-E-R. -T -T -E and keep up with all episodes at TrashOrCashPodcast.com.